Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. No, today I'm not repairing any computers or building any interesting devices. Instead, I'm going to be looking at my work area and turning it into an ESD safe workbench. My workbench up until now has been really simple. I started out just with a cutting mat, and this was mostly just to protect the table. You can see it gets very dinged up very quickly. And then sometime later, I added a soldering mat, which this mostly protects the cutting mat from the soldering iron because it can take really high temperatures. And, you know, it has a few features here, like it holds your screws in place and it's magnetic and yeah, whatever. This almost mostly gets in the way. But I realized this is not quite safe enough. The problem is ESD or electrostatic discharge. Your body can accumulate static charge by itself as you're walking around or moving, and it's normally not a big deal. At most, you may feel a tiny little shock when you touch some metal part. The problem is when you touch some sensitive electronics, like for example, this Commodore 64 board. Then you discharge that static electricity onto the board and you potentially damage the electronics there. So, you say, I know how to fix this. I'll use an ESD wrist strap to ground myself. Unfortunately, that's not quite enough. The problem is that now you may not accumulate a static charge, but the board on your workspace might. And if you're fully grounded and you touch that board, a discharge happens this time from the board to you, and it could damage the electronics there as well. So the better solution is not just to ground yourself, but to also ground your workspace with an ESD safe mat. That way both you and whatever you're working on are grounded and remain at the same potential, and there will be no danger of electrostatic discharges when you touch it. Before we get started, I wanted to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this episode. PCBWay is a great place to get your prototype boards printed. You can make a small order and they ship them to you really quickly. It's actually how I do a lot of my own prototyping, and we'll definitely be seeing them in future episodes. They even have a service that they can assemble the components for you, which I've never tried, but it sounds very promising, especially if you're dealing with lots of tiny little components like I had to do recently. So thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring the episode. Don't hesitate to check them out if you need any PCBs made. This is an ESD safe mat. So it has some conductivity to be able to bring the potential of whatever I'm working on at the same level as myself, if I'm wearing one of those wrist straps. So I bought this specifically thinking of this workspace. So I believe it's 100 centimeters by 50 centimeters. So this is a perfect fit right here. And then over here, I think I'm just gonna cut out a little bit and have it go over this side of the work area just to have a little extra i mean i could cut it out in here but we might as well do this and protect it as much as possible See if I did things right. If not, we can always cut a little bit more. There you go. The mat fits the work surface perfectly, but we're not done yet. So the ESD mat and the ESD or anti-ESD wrist strap could be enough. I could put it on and then attach it directly to the mat like that and now work on things. And that would at least make sure that the potential between the mat and what's on the mat and me is the same, which really it's the most important thing. But we can do a little better than this. The idea is not just to equalize the potential between the table and me, but actually anchor both those potentials to Earth. And for that, we need another connection. And fortunately, they make the connectors just like that. So. I bought this, this is also very inexpensive, and this sits on the edge of the table like this. We can screw it on, we'll see exactly how that works. That might be more challenging than I thought, but the idea is like you screw this onto the table. This has a cable that goes directly to the earth on the plug itself, on the, on the wall plug and the AC plug. And then you can connect the strap, like most of these, whenever you see a, um, an alligator clip, you can remove it and it becomes a banana clip. So you can connect it right there. 
And then we need a similar way to connect the mat to this connector and they make these devices. So this is again, same thing here, alligator and banana clip. So we'll just put a, the banana clip right there because those are nice and secure. And then this, which is um, I think they call a claw, it looks pretty scary. This actually digs into the mat itself and it makes full connection. So we could put that somewhere out of the way back there. So let's go ahead and connect everything. So in the back of this connector it has this rubber protection that prevents us from really screwing it tight to the wall, but fortunately it just comes right out. And as you can see, it's just a single wire going off that is connected to both terminals. So there really is, there isn't anything to this. It's just a convenient way of having the two banana plugs. And I think a good place would be here. I thought of putting it like this, but I like having it here so it's easy to plug in and out. And I think we have enough clearance for the screws right here. So I'll go ahead with this. So this is the plug under my workspace and the earth terminal, which is usually the, the third uh, prong on the European plugs, corresponds to those two on the side. So I don't have enough hands here to try with my multimeter, um, but that's, that's what earth is. And that's what I want to connect to my, um, to my connection on the workbench. Fortunately, the screw is also connected to earth. So I should be able to unscrew this and put the cable right there and screw everything back together. Okay, so I've turned off the power. That's why we have horrible lighting. And let's see what we find back here. Oh, cool. That's much easier than I expected. There you go. I ended up having to take it out to the right so everything would be more or less flush and making good connection. So now let's try to see if uh, this is really connected to Earth. Okay, so everything is plugged in, but the power is not back. And I just want to check that this is connected to Earth. Okay, the terminals are connected and perfect. Okay, we can turn the power back on. So next I need to find the spot to attach this to the mat on the workbench. Ideally, I just want it to be as out of the way as possible, but still reaching the connector over there. So I thought of putting it in the corner here, but then I realized that I often like to have the soldering iron there, so that would get in the way. So I'm thinking it may be better just to attach it right there. And this is long enough. I can even have it run behind the table and going around and connecting here, which would even make this cable be completely out of the way. So I think I'll do that. Now that it's in place, I can connect it very easily and run this through the back. And then this comes all the way around to here and we connect it. There we go, just like that. Now, if we are connected to the wrist strap, we're at the same potential level as the workbench and we're also at the reference level of earth, which makes it much less likely that we'll get any sort of static discharges. How do ESD mats work exactly? Are they conductive? Fortunately not, because otherwise, if you have some board sitting on top of the mat, then it would be shorting everything and you couldn't power anything while on the mat. However, if you check the resistance on the back of the mat, there is a slight conductivity and that conductivity applies also from the top to the bottom of the mat. 
So the mat very slowly conducts electricity away and it prevents a charge from building up on anything that is sitting on top of it. So I have to admit that sometimes it's a little bit uncomfortable to have the cable moving around, especially if you're shaking things or brushing things, or I don't know, sometimes you just have a lot of cables or you're soldering things and this can get in the way. So I understand this is not the most comfortable thing in the world, but there is a really cool little trick, which is you don't really need to have it on your wrist. You could put it somewhere completely out of the way, like around your ankle, for example. <laughs> so please, if in the future you don't see me wearing this strap, don't start yelling at me in the comments. It could be that I'm wearing it on my ankle. And then sometimes actually I'm wearing it on my wrist and it's just off camera and people don't realize it. So a good question about this new surface is that, is it safe to solder on top of this? Because you know that was the whole reason why I got this one in the first place. The cutting board that I had or the cutting mat that I had would completely melt with the uh, soldering iron. So let's do a quick test. Let's solder. Just um, let's just apply some solder to a cable and let's do it first in here. Let's see. I'm just going to hold it down like this. And obviously here, this is silicon. You can do it and pretty much nothing happens. Now let's try it here. Um, should probably choose a spot where I'm not going to completely ruin the middle if it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do it near the edge. So if I ruin it, it's just the edge. And let's see. Mm. It looks like it didn't completely melt like the cutting mat, but I smell some plastic and there's a little mark in there. Let's clean it a little bit. Let's see if it made much of a dent or if it's just superficial. And yeah, it looks like it definitely burnt it. So. That's not ideal. I don't know if they make this kind of um, ESD safe mats that are also um, temperature resistant, but I mean, it was definitely better than the cutting mat for sure. The other one would have just melted and made a big hole. Here it just kind of got burnt and marked, but it's not the end of the world. I suspect this kind of things you probably need to replace every few years because they'll probably get worn and dirty and, and whatnot. But it's good to know that it shouldn't solder directly on top, but it's probably fine if some solder bits fall in here. I doubt they'll damage it very much. The last part of this ESD precautions for my workspace is how I store integrated circuits or just in general ESD sensitive parts. So you know, typically I use some of this um, foam that probably it shipped with them, but this is actually not uh, ESD safe at all. This other one is, so this one seems uh, perfectly fine, but this one is not. So what I'm going to do is I bought some ESD safe foam. Yeah, so they're like fairly large and you can buy a bunch of those. They're pretty inexpensive and just cut them up in the sizes that you want and transfer the chips over it. But before I take them out of here, I'm actually going to equalize my potential to the table because apparently one of the most dangerous moments is when you take them out of this. It's when they, you know, when the, the pins rub against that plastic and they could cause some static discharge. So hopefully this is better. And this is one that I've already started using. I'll cut up a similar shape just like that. And now this even sounds very different. This sounds very, and this is much more muffled. There we go. So that should be much better. And I've been doing this with a lot of the chips as I take them out and I use them. I've been substituting the foam with this kind of foam. So hopefully between all the different precautions, I should really minimize the chances of integrated circuits somehow being damaged by static discharges. So how much did this lab transformation cost? 
The most expensive part was the ESD mat itself. This one was one meter by half a meter, and that was listed at eight euros plus shipping, which ended up being 21.42. The rest of the things were all pretty cheap. Their wrist strap, the mat cord, the ground connector, the foam sheets were a little bit more expensive, but still four of them were about five euros, so not bad at all. Overall, once you add everything together, it was $33.98, which I think is very reasonable and it should fit almost any budget to make your workspace significantly safer. So there you go, brand new work surface and much safer than the old one. It was actually pretty easy to assemble everything and it was pretty cheap, so I think it's a worthwhile upgrade to any kind of workbench where you're going to be doing work regularly, when, you know, holding integrated circuits and other kinds of uh, ESD sensitive electronics. So it's been a couple of weeks since I've made the ESD video and for scheduling reasons, I haven't released it yet. So I wanted to give you guys an update. I've been working on this mat for well, a couple of weeks and just doing normal things with, in this case, I'm working with a QL board that you will have seen by now, um, the video, hopefully. <laughs> and notice how damaged the mat is getting and you know this is just normal work with this it's just like i put a rom and i push in it and it totally makes sense or if i drag this along the the mat it's totally damaging it and scratching it and everything here's another example this is you see how it gets all discolored this was just me from using alcohol to remove some flux so yeah, not impressed with the quality of the mat, which is not surprising because it was really cheap. So I'm curious if somebody knows of an ESD mat that is actually durable and maybe even has a better surface texture, more like that silicon mat. That would be great. And you know, maybe it's incompatible, the silicon mat texture and ESD properties, but the combination of the two would be great. And if it resists temperature like this, um, so it doesn't get like that, then that would be great. So if, if somebody knows one, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next video, see you then. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting Noel's Retro Lab on Patreon or joining the membership on YouTube. Not only is that the best way to support this channel and allow me to continue making more videos, but you also get some extra perks like early access, ad-free videos, and more. Thank you again to all the supporters. See you next time.